Light. Darkness. Kingdom Hearts! And you and I, there's a new We're not playing this version. Living in this Darkness. <laughs> Coaster. Welcome to my video on Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh no, I don't have a camera anymore, do I? Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, vile mix. Now, if you know me, you know my opinion on the first Kingdom Hearts. What? We, we're progressing now! However, I quite enjoy Kingdom Hearts 2, whether that be because of the better combat, the zoomed out camera, or that I played it first. Yep. And yes, I was confused throughout most of it. I mean, after switching to Sora after three hours of Roxas, I was like, who's this brown-haired bimbo? Where's my blonde boy at? But don't worry if this is your first Kingdom Hearts game, you'll be confused by the story, sure, but I mean, let's be honest, two-thirds of the Kingdom Hearts fans are still confused by the story. Why is this anime kid going to Disney Ooh. World? God damn it, I'm fucking frozen. So let's jump right on in. We'll be playing on critical mode, of course. I've heard good things about it. And I mean, in standard mode, you can just kind of get through the game by flailing your keys about wildly. So this will be a nice change of pace. Also, we gotta get that secret ending. Whoa! Buena Vista Games. Whoa. Square Enix. They made this game? So our story begins in Twilight Town. Obligatory Twilight joke here. <laughs> As our protagonist Roxas wakes up. <sighs> what the heck are you so grumpy about? Look at that room. I'd kill to have a room that cool. I'd kill! He reminisces about a dream he had, which I uh, skipped. Roxas and his three friends spend their days having fun and doing drugs in a back alley. Whoa, man. I've got hands and stuff. Whoa, these are crazy. Uh, oh, hi guys. <coughs> you might notice that the subtitles are a bit clipped. That's because A, the only way I can record this game is via an emulator. Uh, I mean, again, I actually own the 2.5 remix, but I can't record it. And B, it could have something to do with the fact that this is actually a Japanese version with an English patch. As you might already know, Japan received the Final Mix version sometime after the game was released with extra content like extra bosses, cutscenes, collectibles, and heck, even an extra drive form based on the original Kingdom Hearts version of Sora. The rest of the world didn't get this version until seven years later in the form of the 2.5 collection. Uh, this was actually a running theme with Square Enix in Japan. I remember 10-2 having one of these too, with the extra dress spheres and a creature creator thing as well. Oh no! They're gone! Our big dicks are gone! All our dicks gone? But you do understand what I'm saying, right? Our big dicks are gone! So the gang runs off to find their ducks, but Roxas trips out as he took too many drugs this morning and keels over. Doubtless he'll awaken very soon. Well, I mean, I hope so. I want to play the freaking game. Now, you might notice Roxas looking a little stretched out there in the bottom right. Ugh. That's because I've used the widescreen hack. It widens the field of view normally for the gameplay, but the HUD, for whatever reason, stretches out to fill the screen. I mean, unlike in the Sonic Heroes hack, which would just keep everything the way it originally was. So everyone seems to be accusing Roxas of stealing all the... Okay, that's got to get confusing. Uh, so he goes around town trying to clear his name to no avail. Now I've got to look for some lady's cat. Uh, all right. Oh no, the camera's inverted. Oh god, the camera's inverted! And I can't change it! Why am I getting deja vu here? Thieves. That was low, you know? Oh yeah? Wow, nice comeback there, Blondie. Nice comeback there, Blondie. I... Oh. That was undeniable proof that we totally owned you, lamers. Oh! Oh man, he really got you there, Roxas! I guess if you get on your knees and beg, maybe I'll let it slide. <laughs> Roxas! Huh, I thought I saw a dollar on the ground here. Maybe over here? Damn it, now I just look stupid. So at this point, you mean to pick a struggle bat to fight with. Well, Cypher and his gang just stand there. Uh, so you go up against Cypher. Isn't this romantic? Oh, Cypher. I, I didn't know you felt that way. Isn't this romantic? Has your check, sir? Agua! So a shiny dancing man sifts along and steals the fat kid's camera, whatever the hell his name is. But I mean, he doesn't seem too upset by this. Roxas chases the mysterious dancing man into the woods and eventually to in front of the haunted mansion, which I just realized is actually a Disney attraction. And movie. Surprisingly, not the only thing involving Eddie Murphy in this game. He's surprised to see his struggle bat transform to a keyblade all of a sudden. What? What is this thing? 
maybe surprise isn't the right word, uh, slightly confused is a little more accurate. And BAM! Done! Who said critical mode was hard? So the dancing man explodes into a pile of fluttering photographs, which if you hadn't caught on yet, with the things it stole, which Roxas takes back to the gang in the alley. They figure out that Roxas is actually in all of the pictures. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. That, that Roxas actually doesn't remember finding the dancing man. J just saying. So, Roxas, tell us about the picture thief. Not much to say. The pictures were just lying there. Wouldn't it be weird if the thief wanted to steal the real Roxas or something? Come on, get serious. Why would anyone want to steal a bonehead like Roxas? Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'd be worried about, you know, kidnappers, your children. Tell your parents! So now we cut to two guys in a computer room. Find the- oh here it is! But gee whiz, that's very confusing. I wish that explained stuff a bit more. Mel one board, moving on. A key... blade? What? Where do we hear anything about a key blade? Man, this is what I'm talking about. This game doesn't take any time to explain anything anymore. So Haney decides he wants to go to the beach. Problem is, to get there, they need to take the train, which costs money that they don't have. So the group decides to head around town doing odd jobs until they've scavenged up enough to buy their way there, with some extra cash for pretzels, of course. No idea which kind of pretzel they're talking about, but whatever. Weird thing is, this is all a simulation, right? I didn't mention that. So why the heck would Mr. Bandage Man program Haney to say, Hey guys, this is a fucking great idea. Let's go to the beach which doesn't exist so Mr. Bandage Man will have to stop us before we leave. It doesn't make sense. I, mean, I understand if they need stuff to happen to show that Roxas can't leave, but I mean, why not pull a Truman show and get him to try to leave? It'd, it'd make a bit more sense then. It'd almost be like playing Sonic Forces and Sonic saying, Hey, let's go over there. Whoops, that's an invisible wall. So the gang start their odd jobs around town. Mail delivery, huh? Mm, I could do this. I can't do this. So Roxas does the mail delivery job once and then says, eh, good enough. So everyone enters the station while Roxas falls flat on his face again. Whoa, the Damn it! So this spooky man in a black coat yanks Roxas to his feet and says something to him only he can hear. But just as Roxas starts Roxas. to question him, he suddenly disappears. Ooh, spooky! He did, however, steal the money the gang had saved up in a matter of three minutes, which actually leads into the best scene in the game. Roxas, the money. Wait. No. So Roxas tries to explain that the black guy stole the money. Uh, guy in the black coat stole the money, but the rest of the group didn't see any black man. Uh, guy in black. Guy? He couldn't have gotten too... Far? What are you talking about? There was no guy. <laughs> you must already know. One must not meddle in the affairs of other world. I thought it was reviewing a game, not a fucking movie. The dancing men try to take Roxas away again, but he runs away. Let me go. Hey, chicken wuss. Oh my god, that's really offensive. Yo, uh, uh Cypher, you might want to do a little bit more than just, uh, you know, point at it with a stick and, and everyone's frozen. And this won't be the last time anything involving Frozen will rear its ugly head. That's amazing. You can control ice. Yeah. It's your aura, you fucking dumbass! Yeah. <laughs> so Namine, who was in a previous cutscene I couldn't be bothered showing, tells Roxas to use the Keyblade to defeat the nobodies. Roxas! Huh? Use the Keyblade! But more importantly, why the heck does that building have a lens flare? So it's up to us to make the important decision. Which camera controls are we gonna change? Bloody hell. Oh no, I've gotten used to the other mode now, God damn it! Is protection important? Well, you get out on, kids, man! Oh man, I start off with all these abilities? Oh yeah, sure! Sweet! Wow, Roxas is into some kinky stuff. This is easy! Oh no, ah, I'm dying! I, uh, thankfully, I can use my reversal technique! Uh, uh. So Roxas and the gang hint to the struggle tournament mentioned briefly earlier, uh, in the game that is, not by me, what do you think I got all the time of the world here? And get ready to fight. Each other? Oh no! But don't worry about me, I'll use my incredible strength! Whoa, wow! Oh, no ops for you, my- ah! what, what, Why am I low on health? Can, can I die from this? Jesus Christ, get away from me! Not even friendship will slow this kid down. I'll murder my friends to achieve my goal. He's dead. Stop dodging around me, Vivi! But it turns out Vivi isn't Vivi at all! It's... What the fuck? Again? 
Even Roxas is realizing how repetitive this is getting. As Roxas gets ready for the toughest fight of his life, oh, we're done here. As another strange man in a black coat teleports in behind Roxas, he's had enough, and he wants to know what's going on. Huh? Roxas, you meant to exclaim your surprise after the Keyblade's teleported back into your hand? And that's one of the main issues about this game. For a story so complicated and dialogue focused, the cutscenes are either badly paced, horrifically timed, or dreadfully slow. Listen to the gaps in the dialogue here. I see you're still in top form. What'd you expect? Looks like you're doing okay. Well, what did you expect? I want the others. Great! Hey, Yuffie, have you seen the King and Riku? I swear, half the runtime in this game is just pauses in between people talking. So Axel says he needs to take Roxas back with him, whether he likes it or not. At this point in the story, we have no idea if Axel is actually trustworthy or not, but any trust he had is quickly tarnished as he tries to murder Roxas. Well, I mean, he's supposed to be trying to knock him out or something so we can take him back to wherever he needs to take him, but Jesus Christ, you don't do that with spitting wheels of fire and death! Yeah, whoa, whoa! Okay, okay Axel, calm down, please. Give, give me a second here! Yes! I did it! With one HP! So after that, Mr. Bandage Man appears and... I have only just noticed how fucking stupid his design is. Who wears two belts on their head? I thought Lulu had a lot of belts, but at least she doesn't wear them on her fucking forehead. Of course, this does, however, lead into another one of the best scenes in the game. This man speaks nonsense. Roxas, don't let him deceive you. Roxas. 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 God damn it! You, you couldn't have paid the actors like an extra twenty bucks to say Roxas's name a little different. I mean, you really got to use the same line again and again. But Roxas cracks and tries to break what I guess he thinks is another strange hallucination. Pinner, Pence. I uh. Forgot the other one! So since Roxas has won against all the other contestants, he's up against the champion! A fully grown man! A what? My life is a Jesus Christ, dude! Think about what you're doing! So Roxas wins the fight against somehow the second grown man he's fought today. I lost against the kid, goddammit, this a third time this week. And receives the struggle trophy, which he quickly tears apart. I always really like these little bauble gem thingies, although why the heck didn't Haina get the green one? That's pissing me off! Color coordination, Roxas! Huh? Oh, who's this? Kyrie? Yeah, I don't care. The next day, Roxas and friends remember they have to do the homework assignment before the summer ends. So, of course, they go eat ice cream. Kingdom Hearts, everybody. The homework assignment consists of a self-picked study, so they decide to do it on the Twilight Town Seven Wonders, consisting of things like balls, sewer mages, a spooky shadow man, and a sack. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on! Who tried to throw away a dog? I, what? Kid, keep a close eye on your dog! Jesus! The other three are some steers, the Horned Mansion, and a ghost train. And wowzers, look at- look at that, it's real! Let's go in. What? Um, you'll get hurt. Or not! The rumors were bogus. The end. We can still make it sound good if we write about all the work we did. I gotta say, I'm loving Odette's voice. Actually, Roxas' three friends are all voiced pretty well. Aside from, you know, a few straight lines. Oh no, they're gone. So the next day, Roxas is a ghost. Yeah, that's kinda it. So Roxas runs into Axel again, who, again, clearly doesn't want to actually hurt him, but Roxas is all like, Nyeh! Axel is then forced to destroy Roxas, but all of a sudden he freezes in place. Now, this has happened a couple times. Firstly, Pence and Olette freeze when we first meet Namine, and then Cypher and his gang when the nobodies appear, and now finally with Axel here. The problem with this is that each time, because as you remember, we're in a digital world, yada yada yada, is that the only ones to freeze are the digital people. As expected, right? Like if a program pauses, the CPUs will freeze alongside it, while the real entities, such as the nobodies, Axel and Roxas, continue to move around. So why is Axel frozen now? Roxas receives a message from old Belthead via telepathy, I guess, informing him to head towards the mansion. He tries yelling his friends' names once more to break out of whatever's happening again. Or that's what I'm assuming the scene just kind of fades to black after, so it's almost like Roxas just yelled it out for the fun of it. Wouldn't it make more sense to, like, for him to check and see if things have gone back to normal or something? Whatever. So Roxas makes his way to the mansion, fighting nobodies on the way, eventually leading him to a secret room where he finds a computer room! The drugs he's been taking all this time catches up to him and he starts freaking out. 
well, all right, I mean, he starts remembering stuff about what happened up to this point, such as his previous life, and that he's a nobody, and even the parts where he would be, you know, knocked out. All right, that makes sense. And Roxas fights some nobodies again, all right. Okay, that's one. That's two. That's me. Axel somehow breaks free of the freezing, again, never explained, and prepares to fight Roxas one more time. And now that Roxas remembers everything, of course he doesn't care. So Roxas rips out another Keyblade, guess he was keeping it in his butt this whole time, and Axel finally gets serious, introducing a quick time event which can eradicate half of his health bar in one hit. Uh. You get on their bad side and they'll destroy you. No one would miss me. That's not true. I would. Where have I seen this before? Am I an android too? So Belthead tells Roxas to join back up with Sora as he's his nobody, and Roxas says, No way in hell! Yeah, alright. So Sora wakes up to see a big duck and mutant dog waiting for him, so they all head out into the real Twilight Town. I I'm sorry if I'm doing a terrible job explaining all this. There's Sora, who was turned into a Heartless back in King Hearts 1, is changed back to a real person by the power of friendship, but when someone of a strong heart dies and turns into a Heartless, they also leave behind an empty house called a Nobody, which was Roxas. Now, normally nobody's looked at their previous self, but I'm not even gonna get into why Roxas looks the way he does, so anyway, Roxas joins Organization 13, which is where Axel was from, then Riku, who apparently between games decided the best option for combat is to not see anything, captures him, takes him down to Belted Guy, who changes Roxas' memories around and puts him in a virtual Twilight Town, which is based on the real thing. And that's like, one of the easier things to comprehend in this game. There's a talking duck. Sora, Donald, and Goofy walk to Twilight Town, instantly heading towards the secret spot Roxas and friends used to hang out in, in the virtual world. Just making sure. How the heck did they know to go back here though? I mean, it's so out of the way. I'd understand if Sora instinctively went back here, you know, like Roxas acting through him. But no, instead Donald and Goofy are the ones to take the lead. That's actually another question I have. Apparently Sora can't wake up until Roxas joins back together with him for whatever reason that is. But if that's the case, why was Sora perfectly fine up until the Castle Oblivion events? Oh wait, I know why. It's because they hadn't thought of half of this shit until later. Also, why does no one question Donald and Goofy's existence? There are regular animals all around town and you think this is fine? As well as Mickey Mouse? The king? Was that really him? Oh wait, no, sorry, with the black coat, that could be anybody, Ooh. So Sora and gang leave town via the train that doesn't exist while Heinous spews some bullshit. Hey, Sora, you sure we haven't met before? It makes no sense to put this line in. Only digital Heina ever met Roxas. Why are they trying to tug on our heartstrings when it doesn't even make sense? Why do you ask? I don't know. Too fucking right you don't know. It makes sense for Sora to cry, sure, but for Heina to even remember anything, it'd have to meet Roxas in the first place. Unless he has a nobody in the virtual Twilight Town too. I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. So now we have a cutscene. Where no one actually talks. This might actually just be a Japanese cutscene with the English patch just taking out the speaking parts though. Although you can still hear the sound effects. It reminds me of that one scene from Sonic Generations where the two Eggmans are supposed to be arguing far away so you can't hear them. And yet you can still perfectly hear the quietest of sound effects. So the train drops Sora and the gang off at a tower suspended in space and time and they head towards the front door where they run into Pete. You ought to find something nicer to do. Oh, says who? Uh, it's you! Pete? Or someone they definitely don't know. Jeez, what is it with these characters are not recognizing the most insanely unmistakable characters? Look at that fat, luscious rump. Sora doesn't know Pete as he actually wasn't in the first game. But Donald and Goofy do, saying he's a troublemaker who King Mickey banished into another dimension a while ago. But he's back because... It, Maleficent or something, I don't know, she, she died in the last game. Do, do they even explain why she's back? Should I care? Moving on. So they meet up with the mystical Yen Sid, whose name spelled backwards is Diz- Wow, I never actually noticed before. What the heck is Sora actually wearing? And what, it's like a weird onesie kind of thing with a tiny ass jacket and a belt? Why does he need a belt? Boy, that zipper goes all the way down. I'm the key? No, the key's the key. You're just the guy that holds the key. On your journey, you will meet an alarming number of dusts. I would have never guessed. Whoa! Wow! Two keyblades! No shit, Goofy. I was just letting the audience realize that for themselves, but you always gotta get the last word in, huh? Well, anyway, Sora can use the second keyblade by utilizing the drive gauge and entering his valor form, thanks to... Ventus being in his heart, or, I don't know, fucking Kingdom Hearts, man. This journey's gonna be twice as difficult as your last. Lady, if you see my skills, it's gonna be a piece of piss. As Sora exits the room, he drops a small glowing crown. 
No, it looks like a small glowing crown. You can find these small glowing crowns in various places throughout the levels, and once you put them all together in the right place in Jiminy's notebook, who is also here, whom I promptly forgot about because he speaks two lines at the beginning and then nothing for the rest of the game, you get rewards like accessories. Why is the screen black? What, we not have any gameplay for this? Oh, right, I didn't even look in Jiminy's journal once in my entire playthrough. I did actually complete them all in my PS3 game, but I couldn't be bothered scavenging around for them this time. Again, you only get a few accessories and items, and each puzzle takes a long time to complete, so... After many long, drawn-out cutscenes, it's time for our three heroes and, and Jiminy to finally head out into the new Disney worlds. So you guys ready to go? No, no. Just a moment. Nope! Howdy, Sora! How you doing? Shut up! So Sora, Donald, and Goofy head towards Hollow Bastion in the gummy ship and run into Donald's Uncle Screw. Oh, I don't care. Unsurprisingly, they run into more nobodies, and after dispatching them, <laughs> who the heck made the Mickey ass mouse sound? They meet up with Leon and uh uh Sel, 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 selfie? Uh, his gang. I, I think Merlin's there too or something. So Leon explains to Sora that the Heartless are still running rampant and the nobodies are not a welcome addition. We'll handle them. Well, that's good to hear. So, Sora. So more nobodies appear because you will meet an alarming number of dusks. And, uh, oh no, the gate's closing. Uh, 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 well, it's a good thing then because I'm not trapped in here with them. They're trapped in here with me. Ow! So Sora, of course, decides to use his ultimate Keyblade attack. Smack the wall. Don't worry, Leon. I got this guy. All right, he's stunned. Time to. No, 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 no. You don't want me. Oh. Well, at least I'm not dead. Ow! Ow! Can I leave? Ow! I have an amazing idea, though. I can't go to drive form during the fight, but if I change before I enter the fight, I should be able to- No! Can you use something other than fire, Leon? Oh my god! Gosh, and I gotta run back every time? I Why is this so difficult? The Keyblade. A truly marvelous weapon. Were it only in more capable hands. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna argue with that, actually. So I should probably mention the gummy ship at this point. You use it to traverse between worlds and yada, yada, yada. You know, you can build your own, you know the drill. But unlike in the first game, the levels aren't crap and the building is actually doable. Wow, how about that? I thought it was just my incompetence as a kid that stopped me from building anything in Kingdom Hearts 1, but no, it turns out it's just really shit. So here it comes, my pride and joy, the spaceship of the century. The spaceship of the century. The bows are butt! So the first world up is either the Land of Dragons or the Beast's Castle. We'll head towards the Land of Dragons first, or as normal people would say, Mulan's world. So it starts off with Sora and the gang walking past Mushu, Mulan's dragon, giving her a pip talk with the help of a fire and some shadows. Uh-huh, yes! Let's get the jump on him. It'll be easier to fit in if I'm with guys like you. You're pretending to be a boy, aren't you? Huh? What? You're a pretending to be a boy? You're terrible at it! About time we got some grub. Hey, no cutting! Uh, yeah, rightly so. Sora, you can't just stand in a line expecting to get fed when you're not even a part of the army. What the hell? So some heartless show up or something, I don't know, you know how it is. And Sora, Donald, and Ping prepare to fight. And Ping is friggin' useless! Donald, don't heal her, she's a waste of MP. What the fuck? So in order to prove Ping's worth, but not Sora, Donald, or Goofy's because they actually know how to hold a weapon without falling over, we must complete three tasks set by Shang, the general. Each one is just a variation of kill all the heartless, or as Shang puts it, mum 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 mum. So you see this bar at the top of the screen? That's Ping's uselessness gauge. If you or your teammates get hit, you'll drop some orbs depleting the bar. If the bar hits zero, Ping will... I don't know, it's never really explained. She probably just runs away, the pussy. This is actually where I can show off the Valor Form. I've been trying to use it previously, but I didn't realize you had to sacrifice Goofy in order to do so. The Valor Form almost plays the same as Roxas when he had two Keyblades, meaning you've got no guard, but you can press the same button to instantly start up your finishes, something I didn't figure out until I started streaming a different playthrough on Twitch. Hey, yeah, that's right, I got a Twitch channel too. I just really hope they start letting people upload videos because, you know, YouTube just really doesn't seem to be giving a single shit anymore. Maybe a bit of... Friendly competition will help them get their shit together. <laughs> oh, I am 
a bolt. <laughs> <laughs> I am genuinely appalled. <laughs> Picking you up when you're down. around. <laughs> 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 So the second mission is, uh, pretty much exactly the same as the first. It was also where I figured out these dang ghosty guys are immune to blizzard! <laughs> Hope this means we'll get to see Elsa get her shit kicked out of her by these things. Meanwhile, and why didn't that hit me land? Wow, what the heck is this thing? Whoa! Talk about spin to win, am I right? <laughs> Here, find the hidden heartless. That'll be easier, right? Damn it, ping! Oh, I get it now. I don't get it. I did, however, figure out that if I let the Heartless come to me, you can take down a bunch of them in one go with a totally lit move. Fire! More like fire my rider. Well, at least I'm getting the hang of this. These guys are toast. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, oh, don't worry, Sora. I got this. <laughs> Note to self. Can't guard explosions. Oh, God, leave me alone. Oh, man, I can only use a high potion. What? I don't want to waste it. I did the right thing. Ha ha! Guarding a text is what I do best! I got him on the ropes now! Another spin to win! I'm just waiting till my blizzard comes back up. Let me, let me grab those orbs. I guess not. Oh, 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 we're almost there! We're almost there! Yes! No! We'll get rid of the ghost guys first, I suppose. That's a lot of reach. Oh wow, Goofy's got him in a stun lock! Great work, Goofy! But I'm gonna switch you in for Donald. Thanks for the heels, Donald! And he's dead. Wonderful. Thanks, Donald! Hang on. That is not meant to happen. In Kingdom Hearts, Donald does not heal you. Well, that's a surprise. He's actually being helpful. Let's just do the third one instead. Well, that was easier than I thought. Well, back to this shit, I guess. Oh, yeah, hey, I leave it up valor form. How the hell do I protect myself from a double spin to win? Boy, these uh, spin to wins sure are. Uh... Making my head spin. Oh my god! Oh, finally! Oh, man! Oh, did I now? Cool. So as we climb the mountain, it turns out that there's large piles of rubble standing in the way. Thankfully, we have the necessary moves in order to- Oh no, not the gods again, damn it! So we make it to this village in the snow some ways up the mountain and Mushu sees the main villain, Shan Yu, enter a cave off to the side. Don't know why they called the commander oh, Shang oh, oh. and the villain Shan Yu, that's kind of confusing. But Sora and the gang chase him down, only to fall into a trap. Wait, how did Shan Yu get behind them though? Was he holding himself up on the roof of the cave? Also, he probably could have just stabbed Donald and Goofy in the back right there and then. I don't know why he just walked away. All right, Heartless. Regular old Heartless. Nope. All right, I'm done for. And all I got is ping, damn it. So I developed a strategy over many, many deaths. So firstly, you gotta... I got nothing. First, fire on the Heartless. Second, guard the horse guy. Third, leave your MP to charge. Ah, oh, please hurry up. Shut up, this is working. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Mamma mia! I did it! Hold your horses, Sora! <laughs> Took out every one of them, huh? The only thing Ping could take out is Cypher! Isn't this romantic? So the trio Ping doesn't count as a person, exits the cave, and they find out that the village has been burned to the ground where they've been fighting. Usually I'd make a joke that burning a village usually takes a lot longer than just checking out a cave, but with how many times I died, I can't say shit. Don't overdo it, Captain. It's just a scratch. Not even that, his clothes don't even have any dirt on them. Captain, if you track down the villagers, we'll handle this. That'll be easy. They're all dead. At least we can still save here, that's nice. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute! I've been 
playing for three hours? Is they make it to- Oh, no, moving on. Wait, did- What? Did, did my teammates die in that cutscene? Oh, God, no! I gotta fight all these- PNGs? Thank goodness all I needed to do was stay alive. I don't think I could've killed them all. Oh, they're all gone. Um... Didn't he have an army of men in the movie? Replacing them with big bugs really isn't as intimidating. Oh, uh, Flint, huh? Flint, I need some... Uh. So Ping goes back to being Mulan after that cutscene, which I skipped, and with that change comes a bunch of new and better abilities, including a limit. A limit is basically a super move performed by Sora and one of his party members, in this case, Mulan. So the gang head back to the army to tell Shang that Shang Yu was still alive. I guess he was still alive in that cutscene I skipped over or whatever. But Shang won't believe them because apparently Ping was a girl all along! Gee! Who could have fucking known? And why should I believe you this time? But she's telling you the truth! Why am I getting Tom and Jerry and Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory vibes from this? So a bunch of Shang's men turn into Heartless because... I don't know, I guess they felt like it. So Sora and Mulan say they'll fight them off while the heavily injured man fights off the incredibly dangerous Shan Yu. And no, it's not like Shang's suddenly better because you'd see him in the next cutscene and he's still horribly injured. I mean, what the hell, Sora? So in this boss fight against Shan Yu, they re-implement the whole guard the gates thing from before in that one battle in Hollow Bastion. It's pretty easy to stop the gates from busting open. The only thing you... Oh, uh, what the... I, I, I don't want to target the bird. It's Mickey! Ow! So here's a nice little addition that I personally was absolutely blown away by when I finally found it as a kid. When you die, there's a chance that Mickey will show up to save the day! He jumps really high, has lock-on missiles, and beats the ever-loving shit out of your enemies. The whole point of him is to get enough drive gauge so he can revive Fora with... Fora? He can revive Fora? Revive Sora with full HP and MP, plus a maxed out drive gauge. If you get too low as Mickey without getting your drive gauge full, he'll still revive Sora, but instead of his HP, MP, etc. being restored, he'll just gain a bit of health. Oh shit, Mickey's back! Now that's what I call burning some honey bun! Oh yeah! Mulan's the best! Mulan's the best! Now wait a minute, I'm the best! Mushu's the best! Well, Mushu, I'm not gonna argue. Most of Mulan's abilities revolve around you. I mean, heck, even the limit does. What the heck has Mulan done so far? Fall over? You have saved us all. What?! Thank you. Thank you? Is that all there is to say, Captain? If you wish to win the heart of Famu- Who cares, really, now? Oh, heck yeah! This is my favorite keyblade. So the next word up is Beast's Castle. Uh, but first we gotta get through the gummy ship segment. And look at that, pure lock on technology, folks. Boy, this fucking sucks. It's huge. That's what she said. <laughs> so as expected, Heartless seemed to be swarming the castle. So Sora and friends try to burn it down. I guess, Jesus, Sora, watch out for the furniture. Thankfully, the Beast hears the commotion and comes down to help. Or so they think. They realize something is up with the beast, so they decide to figure out what that is. And knowing this series, it's either amnesia or darkness. Take your pick. Oh, what am I going to do? Skip the cutscene, of course. They meet Belle, who informs them that her friends are trapped in the dungeon, thanks to the beast. So Sora and friends head to the dungeon, but get killed by a fat man sliding on his stomach. They find the entrance to the dungeon, but a sentient wardrobe has other ideas blocking their path. Sora, this would be a good time to put that fire magic to use. So they enter the dungeon and run into a door, Heartless. Sounds stupid, I know, but it's not half bad. How many guys are immune to Blizzard? I hate to tell you, Mickey, but I think you might be on the losing side. Oh, well, I guess that was worthless anyway. Or oh, Mickey's back for the fourth time? I, I thought he was supposed to be rare. Okay, I'm back. Hey! So once you beat the Heartless and Sora stops hitting the walls, the gang finds himself in an empty room. Very clearly. Empty room in a house with many living objects. Yep, what an empty room. So yeah, they meet the other servants which were turned into objects and they tell the tale of how exactly that came to be. An old beggar woman came to the castle and asked for shelter. Now who gives a shit? So in order to get out of the dungeon, they have to light the lamps in this room because you know, who wants to go through the door we came in through? That's stupid. But Radical Soda, if they go through that door, they can't get through because of the armored guards. Oh, yeah, you're right. They look completely impossible, with no large gaps between them or anything. At all. And even if they couldn't actually somehow just walk between them, the servant can order them aside anyway! Why they, don't they just do that? Anyway, this leads into another annoying minigame of sorts. We have to light the lamps by quickly utilizing the teapot and the candle dude. 
Now, I say quickly because Cogsworth, the only servant I bothered learning the name of, even though the game just calls him friend, is the one hanging onto the lever which keeps the lamps low enough to be lit, and of course he can't hold on forever. You'll have to go back at least once if you don't know exactly what to do, which isn't even a huge waste of time, but as there's nothing really at stake here due to the lamps not even extinguishing when you run out of time, it's really unneeded. What was even the point of putting all this in? It just leads to more frustration, especially when the teapot can't get here in time, so you have to go all the way back and wait for a slow ass again because Cogsworth needs a water in order to start hanging onto the lever again. Actually, now that I think of it, isn't that kind of like offering someone your bodily fluids to drink? Also, uh, I have one question about this part. Why don't Donald or Goofy hang on to the lever instead? They don't even do anything here, they just walk around! Ugh, oh, well, well, at least we'll be getting out of the dungeon now. I'm assuming we'll end up somewhere deep into the castle if we had to go through all that shit. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I see. Oh gee, I haven't even talked about drops from enemies or anything. Okay, let's start with the diamond yellow things. This is your money. Although it's spelled the same way Pooh spells honey. I, I don't know whether that's a direct reference or not, as Pooh is actually in the first game too. But either way, I, I like it. You can, of course, use this money to buy stuff like potions, new weapons for Donald and Goofy, and etc, etc. Pretty standard stuff. The yellow orbs, on the other hand, fill up your drive gauge. And I've already explained that, so uh, I, I guess enemies also sometimes drop items? Occasionally you'll get a potion or something, but most of the time you'll be collecting synthesis items used to synthesize, well, items. The green orbs are health pickups, essentially, which come in handy a lot of the time. Enemies also give you experience points, of course, which level you up, no shit. I feel like I'm forgetting something. So Sora and the gang make it up to the Beast's room, where he's apparently gone apeshit and torn the place asunder. So they all decide to help him in the best way possible, beating the crap out of him! So they and the Beast head towards Bell's room, destroying all enemies they come across. Goddamn spin to win! So they hit towards. So Sora and the gang blast their way to Bell's room, avoiding all and any enemies along the way. Unfortunately, a demon has possessed the wardrobe! So they find Bell in the ballroom, although there's a heartless there too. It sinks into the ground, turning it into a deep black. Oh, I guess we're skipping this one too. Now, this boss fight's kind of a waiting game. Ow. Although it does have some neat ideas. Basically, the heartless possesses items around the room. Like a wardrobe! Wait, where did he go this time? Oh! Uh, uh oh. Oh wow, Mickey's back! And he's pretty much useless. I'm not kidding. In order to purge the Heartless from the items it possesses, you have to do a reaction command. Mickey can't do those. Well, guess this is my life now. Why do I keep thinking that that sounds like Ursula? Ow! <laughs> Almost done. No! Come back here! Are you serious? Okay, here we go. You gotta be joking me. There! Finally! Gee whiz, that took a Oh, come on! Oh, crap. It even goes invisible. That's good. I mean, it can't be too hard, right? This boss still has half an hour of footage left. However, I will say that this mode has been teaching me how to play the game a little better. For instance, in standard mode, I never guarded. I, I didn't ever get hit enough to warrant even equipping it, so, I mean, what was the point, right? Critical mode teaches you how to play the game the way it was intended. At least, I think so. Stuff like guarding, magic, and drive forms aren't just something you can use all willy-nilly anymore. You have to be really careful about what you do and when. And every enemy has its own specific pattern and strategy. And for someone like me who's only ever played the standard mode, it's really satisfying to realize that I'm improving with every encounter. So take your gameplay relies too heavily on button mashing and shut up your ass, GameSpot. Look at that health, he's in for it now! Whoa, 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 whoa! What the fuck? I swear to god if I have to fight this fucking first phase guy one more time. Time for the big finale! What? Holy macaroni! So it turns out that this was all the doing of Zaldin, who's a part of Organization 13. He was going to turn the beast into oh, heartless. That way they could get that nobody. All right, I think I can explain it myself, control. Goofy. Oh, what a touching moment. So the gummy ship starts heading off on a tow towards Hollow Bastion. So it turns out it was Merlin who summoned them, and oh, does anyone actually care? So Sora's gonna see Winnie the Pooh. Goofy says his name really weirdly. Sora. And with Zam, here we are. I'm gonna be honest, I'm only here for the AP boost. So Pooh kicks the shit out of Sora, sending him flying out of the book, but there are more important matters at hand, like these random heartless. Ooh. Thankfully, we do get one good thing out of this encounter. Chicken Little. Great. So next up is the Olympus Coliseum, or as I like to call it, Hercules Land. And you know the drill, you know, dick out the gummy ship, start the level, kill everyone on board. Twice. Three times. 
Okay, many times. Hey, at least I figured out how to change the guns from semi-automatic to fully automatic. Up, up until now, I've been mashing the shoot button. So we get to Hercules land and see the Rock Titan being beaten by the man himself. Dang, you know he won't be in Kingdom Hearts 3. Here's where another nonsensical cutscene happens. It turns out Sora and the gang didn't land on the surface of Hercules land. Instead, they landed their gummy ship in hell. <coughs> Before long, a hot, hot babe is seen running away from the Heartless, who promptly do nothing. Why is the music still going on? At this point, we know she's okay. I, I, at the most, you'll have a scraped up knee from falling over. So here we meet- And you're supposed to be? A good voice actor, what? So Mick here wanted to go down into the underworld to see if she can convince Hades to give Hercules a break for a bit as he's worn out from tackling his monsters day in and day out. So Sora and Co decide to head down to see if they can talk to Hades instead. But they quickly run into another organization member. Run, run away. Okay. <laughs> It seems that Pete is working together with Hades in order to take down Hercules. Pete's of course doing it because he wants Hercules as a strong heartless, and Hades is doing it because... the... he doesn't like Hercules, I guess. I, I didn't watch the movie. So Hades has apparently had enough of Hercules winning and decides to summon the mother of all bad guys, that being... Orin... from Final Fantasy X? I KNEW IT! So Hades wants Orin to fight Hercules, which... I, I mean, Orin's strong, but... that strong? But Orin refuses outright, leading Hades to- OH GOD! So as it turns out, in the Underworld, heroes are made weaker by the force of... Underworld. Whatever. Who actually cares? Well, we've got James Woods, ladies and gentlemen! Hades doesn't want to hear anything from Sora and co, which I mean, makes sense if the guy's trying to kill Hercules, he's not just gonna stop because you ask him to. But I've gotta to talk to Hades! What was that? That's funny, but it was edited, by the way. The real version has got this really long, weird pause. But I've gotta to talk to Hades! What was that? So Sora and Co gotta run away from Hades as they can't seem to hurt him in any way, and thus begins a small segment where you must defeat each of the Heartless and each of the three small arenas to continue. And I hope you like the words, Feel the heat. Because you're gonna be hearing them a lot. So once you've defeated all the Heartless, So once you've defeated all the Heartless, So once you've defeated all the- So once you've defeated all- So once you've defeated- So once you've- So once- So- Every time I died there, I had to run back up to the top, skip the cutscene, fight Hades, skip another cutscene, and watch the arena intro to get back to that part again. Oh. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? So a Sora and friends make their way back to- Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Okay, not gonna make the same mistake as the other encounters. What does he do? What does he do? Uh, snap his jaws. Alright. He, uh, walks around, growls a bit. It's okay. Okay, let me try to hit him. So I have a new strategy. I'm raring to go. It's gonna do me wonders. That does not do much damage. And I didn't equip any items. So great. Orin, attack! Attack! Orin, attack, please! Orin, get up, please. I gotta do the limit. I... It'll kill it! Oh, oh god. Oh god! <sighs> Sora, don't let me down. I won't, Mig. Wait, I already have. <laughs> Whoops. How do you think this calls for a woman's touch? Well, there she is. Would you like to give little 3D models of everyone lying around? Oh, my drive gauge! I'm so happy to see you! Junior heroes always busy. Okay, fuck you, Hercules. Did you save the universe from the most powerful Heartless? I don't think so. If you're so powerful, why don't you fucking go beat Ansem, huh? What did you beat? A big rock? Yeah. We beat Sephiroth for shit's sake. Have you earned your true hero wings yet? Uh. Nope, you ain't got what it takes. Rick. Fuck you, Phil! Uh, I'm just going to walk out here all purposely and then stand here and do nothing. Then again, while the others are doing something, it certainly isn't. Well, meaningful. All of a sudden, Hades appears, giving Hercules and our three heroes, uh, fr junior heroes, the news that he's captured Megan in the underworld. Hades, we gotta talk. 
Sorry, I just like that scene. So Hercules gets set to rescue Meg, but Hades wants none of that, instead forcing Herc the Jerk to stay behind to fight the bloodthirsty Hydra. Ah, well, can't all be heroes. You're right, apparently even saving the universe doesn't make you a hero anymore. Can you handle this? You got it, we're heroes. Junior heroes, Donald. Stop rubbing it in, Goofy. Gotta find Meg. Ah, shit, I didn't even tell him where to look, did I? Whoa, whoa, hang on! The logo's now got the upper world and the underworld. That's pretty cool. Jesus Christ. You look like Ursula. What is with these characters having some sort of feature resembling Ursula? Let's see what's in here. A strength boost? Heck yeah, I'ma use that. On Donald? So while Sora and the gang head to the underworld, Herc the Jerk fights and kills the bloodthirsty Hydra. What is with me and not bothering to say the names myself? Am I that lazy? And the non-existent Thanks, crowd cheers him on as he sets off to help Sora and the gang in the underworld. Whoa! I think we might just skip by these guys. Uh, nah, I'm sick of thought maybe I should figure out their tech patterns and stuff. Oh, we might not. Let's get the heck out of here. Have a taste of your own medicine. <laughs> oh god, he didn't like that at all. Where the heck is the exit of this place? I feel like I'm going around in circles. Oh, here we go. Come on, come on. No time for final. We gotta save Meg. I ran around in a circle, didn't I? Yep. So our three junior heroes come across a mysterious man, a teenager, who's a part of Organization 13. He either thinks Sora is Roxas or tries to get Roxas who is inside Sora to come out somehow. Actually, that could be a really neat idea. Roxas taking over Sora's body for a while, you know, maybe having a different battle style or something. I'm sorry, I'm fangirling out here, but, uh, but, but nothing really comes to that, so he's instructed to bring Sora back to the organization by force. He uses the hero's medallion that I forgot to mention that was stolen earlier, which allows heroes to restore their strength in the underworld, which doesn't actually make much sense unless Demix here is a hero of some kind? He summons his water clones with the power of music, which are incredibly easily beaten thanks to the reaction command. Are you even looking at me? I didn't even know those things could hurt you. Demix pulls a muzzle playing his instrument or something, I mean, because I didn't friggin' hit him, and he drops the medallion. Dora gives... Dora? Did I just call Donald Dora? Donald gives Sora the weakest low five I've ever seen. What the fuck was that, Donald, you pathetic prick? And they head onwards to save Meg, who was trapped alive in a rock. Oh god, it's my worst nightmare. Yeah, but we'll open these chests here first. What's wrong? Can't fight in the underworld? Better think again. <laughs> now I'm back in business, baby! Anyway, after that fight, Never thought I'd die to Pete, I'm gonna be honest. Also, did I mention that Meg doesn't shut up? Soon enough, our junior heroes oh, are overwhelmed by the sheer amount of enemies, which happens actually kind of often now that I think about it. Maybe junior heroes is right after all. But Herc the Jerk comes down to save the day. You're not gonna use the medallion on him or anything, Sora? I, yep, he's overwhelmed within seconds. Hero, can't beat some heartless. Junior Hero defeats the most powerful Heartless. Seems reasonable. So Herc the Jerk and Sora take down Pete, with Herc surprisingly having one of the same battle lines as Hades. So they both demolish Pete while Donald does fucking nothing. But it turns out that the Hydra that Herc the Jerk fought isn't actually dead. I left everyone unprotected. Uh, yeah. Everyone. All zero of them. So Phil decides to help out along with the horse. And, and Meg, I, seriously, we just rescued you from a bunch of heartless and now you want to take on a Hydra? So in order to defeat the Hydra, you must follow these very important steps. Step one, Donald must die. Ah, you're doing the same thing as the Beast's boss, are you serious? No bad premature there. Okay, starting again, jump Donald, jump! Shit! The There's the fellow I know and love. The yeah, don't worry game, I heard him the first two times. Oh, thank you! Fuck you, Meg! Okay, Meggy, it's up to you. I don't think you can hit me over here. Okay, what do I, what do I got? What? I... I'm stuck? Are you kidding me? Oh, what's that? What? I, I saw a triangle. There's a tri triangle. What? 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 what, what, what I, come on, I'll, I'll take anything. I, I'll take any hit. Look at all this health! I let you down. I'm just... <sighs> no use! Oh, I almost forgot. The Olympus Stone. 
Well, what, what, the Olympus Stone, what was they calling it again? The Hero's Medallion? Then we get a cutscene about how Maleficent is back in the such, you know, yada, yada, yada. She doesn't even really do anything in this game. And then we learn that Queen Minnie is having some trouble over at Disney Castle. It turns out that the Hall of the Corner so oh, who gives a shit about this either? Seriously. Ah, crap, now we're here. Well, only one thing to do, I guess. There's a place that everybody knows is full of joy and glee. M-I-C-K-Y-M-O-U-S-E Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse I'm gonna break into his fucking house Gosh, I'm bored, this isn't fun, this world can suck my dick Minnie's here alone in fear, Mickey is a prick Heartless everywhere and now there are no girls to spare No one's here, I don't care, let me go to bed The Disney Kingdom lies here and it's got no self-defense M-I-C-K-E-Y-P-R-I-C-K Mickey Prick Mickey Prick Your Majesty Queen Minnie will back! Up. No, I want to talk to the shop, Mickey, go away! So we have to get Minnie to the Hall of the Cornerstone through a Horde of Heartless. I mean, thankfully she's got a super OP move which damages and knocks away Heartless. Unfortunately, she's a fucking dumbass. Just follow me, damn it! How hard is it to move your little mouse legs? As soon as the trouble started, I made sure to seal this room. Fat load of good that did. Have you ever thought that maybe you haven't heard the words this, this way, way enough? This, this section's got you covered. This way, 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 this way. So as Alvin and the Chipmunk said earlier, it's true that the Hall of the Cornerstone is now filled with giant thorns. It's the <coughs> they figure that the best person to talk to this about is Merlin. I don't know, fucking Mer Merlin. Merlin. They set off back to Hollow Bastion. Can we not just have this in a cutscene? So as Donald explains what's going on. <laughs> or uh, spouts gibberish. <laughs> Wait, Merlin could just teleport anywhere at will, even between worlds. That would be incredibly useful! Why doesn't he help us more often?! So it turns out that someone is middling about with the cornerstone in the past, so Merlin summons a magic door which takes out three junior heroes back in time. Wait, what? He can travel through time now?! So Sora, the Keyblade's chosen one, the one who defeated the strongest Heartless, killed China's most dangerous man, walloped a giant claw demon, and decimated a Hydra, struggles to open a door, and then walks through to travel to the past. So the three of them are hurled back in time. Or the... Two of them, I don't see Donald anywhere. But this is Timeless River, or as I kept remembering it as, the land before time. Because I'm a fucking dumbass. The theme here is based on the old Disney cartoons, or most notably, Steamboat Willie. Which was actually the very first Disney cartoon with properly synchronized sound. It's a really neat idea for a Disney world. They soon run into Pete, but something seems a little off about him. Hey you, seen any bad guys around here? It's so incredibly clear that this isn't the real Pete, instead it's pretty obvious that it's Timeless River's version, you know, like, Steamboat Willie and all. Unfortunately, they don't actually do the whole is he, isn't he thing, more they just kind of give it away within the first few seconds. Of course, our three junior heroes, god I really have to stop saying that, are so incredibly stupid that they don't realize that it's not their Pete, instead they just beat the crap out of him. So after they break his back, they realize that he isn't actually the Pete they've been fighting this whole time, and they tell him they'll help him get his boat back, which has been stolen. And then they don't even try. Like, they just forget about it two minutes later. Jesus, why did these three suddenly turn into assholes? Instead, they decide to track down Heartless, which have made their way into several portals to other places. I, I don't know, I, I don't care. So the first arena thingy up is the room. I did not hit her, it's not true. It's bullshit, I did not hit her. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, I did not mean the movie. I did not. They see the king, or at this point should be fairly obvious, Timeless River's version of the king. Uh, once the Heartless are defeated, Mickey shakes Sora's hand gratefully and then runs off. There's also a video thingy in here which is clearly explaining in first person how Pete got in here, but as we already know, the Pete fight isn't fought one in the form of the pri- What? What the fuck am I writing here? What? As we already know, the Pete we fought isn't the one from the prison, so it's hard to even care. Uh, now we just know his big fat ass is gonna show up later. So the next one up is... Giant fetish land. No, the arena is a miniature town where it'll start being destroyed the longer the Heartless attack it. And seeing as the majority of the Heartless here have a wide AoE attack, you'd better kill him quick. If you're not feeling particularly skilled, you can actually just jump on this tower to stun all the Heartless at once. This makes the fight pretty dang easy though. 
The next one up is the building site, which is pretty easy too. And the last one is the burning building, and these fucking cards can one hit you! So you beat the fire one by spamming Trinity Limit, Goofy tries to break the fourth wall, and having that shit. So it turns out that Pete stole in Pete's boat in order to steal the cornerstone. I have so many questions. First of all, where did New Pete's tail go? And in order to get it back, you must parry and hurl the things he psychokinetically throws at you. Or well, how about I use some thunder on your ass? For some weird reason, you have to hang on to this hook in order to break open the cage holding the cornerstone. I mean, it's just right there, just reach out a bit, you know? But more importantly, what the heck is going on with that thick chin? Rinse or repeat three times or so and you've got yourself a boss fight. So apparently Pete's trying to get away and the gang have to stop him. I, I mean, they didn't try to stop him at any other point in the story. Why start now? Oh, to have a reason for another boss fight? Alright. This time you team up with Timeless River Pete in order to take him down. Although when I say team up, I really mean he kind of just flails around and his attacks still damage you too. But I mean, it it's a fight against Pete. It's really not much of a challenge. When Pete gets down to a certain amount of HP, he'll change the battlefield to suit one of the previous Heartless arenas. Actually, why he doesn't call any Heartless in this fight, I really can't tell you. But hey, I'm not complaining. No, I was- I was guarding! I, I saw the animation! Pete actually gains an extra attack when he changes the arena, that being sort of a command thing, where whatever gimmick he's currently imposing on you will try to get you in some way. Yeah, those fireballs are kind of fast, aren't they? So Pete has mainly the same attacks as before, like throwing out balls, throwing out one big ball. Gosh dang, I really gotta sit my game up. You can actually guard against the big ball he rolls at you. Uh, don't guard too early though. But he has a very simple attack pattern. He'll gain parry frames while he's yelling, GET OUT OF MY WAY! Should probably not be in the air for that. But you can stagger him pretty easily, so you just have to pick your times carefully. Oh, sorry, I can just whiff! Every time he does his Get out of my way! attack, he'll slam the ground, creating a shockwave, something Donald and Goofy just love being in every time. Wait, no, I mean the circle on square! Ah, oh, why am I having such a hard time with this? It's just Pete! Okay, I'm back in the room. I got Chicken Little to help out. Did I mention he was here? Pete's flying around. God damn it, little chicken, chicken little. Okay, I've got a good feeling about this one. I, I, I don't get, I don't get it. Out of all the things to beat me, out of all the things to beat my ass, it's Pete. Fucking Pete! And, and every time I fight him, I gotta go back into my abilities, turn off retaliating slash, gotta turn on dodge slash. I mean, look at all these abilities I have, and they're all still fucking worthless. Hang on.